words from today's epistle. Noli vinci amalo sit vince in bono malum. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Last week we saw that joy was a quintessential, quintessential part of the Catholic faith, and among, well, even among the many trials that we may face in life, we learn from St. Paul that despite the sorrows in life, we still shall remain joyful, to remain joyful always, to rejoice always in the Lord. Today's epistle is a continuation of last week's epistle, chapter 12, Romans, and it is from verses 16 to 21. And the instruction for today for St. Paul is to quote from this epistle, to no man render evil for evil, but provide good things only in the, not only in the spirits of God, or in the sight of God, but also in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as far as you, in you lies, be at peace with all men. End quote. These words reiterate God's commandment to obviously love God and love neighbor, but also as far as possible to be at peace with all men. The reality is that there is evil in the world and there are evil men in the world. And if we look at salvation history, we see the battle began many, many uh, thousands of years ago. Well, with uh, with Adam, and we, we know that there was two two groups: the children of God, or the children of light, or the children of the devil, or the children of darkness. Those who are the seed of the woman, and those who are the seed of the devil. And since then, there have been evil plans and machinations against humanity, against mankind, because they were given the opportunity for salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as a part of, and as a result of this ongoing battle as, as going on, there are times when instinctively, even for the children of God, we want to render evil for evil. St. Paul says at the end of today's epistle, be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. But this is, in the part of the fallen nature, there is, there is this want for revenge to, to, to render evil for evil, and I think we've all been in an unfortunate position where we wanted to exact revenge, evil for evil, on those who, who maybe offended us or caused some affront, or enemies against humanity, or enemies or against one's country, whatever it may be. And in, in history, when we look at the past, we, we know that in the civilizations of the Babylonians, among the Jews, among the Romans, and even the Muslims, they all held this law which, which Romans call the law of Lex Taniolis, which is the law of retaliation. Basically, an eye for an eye, or tooth for a tooth. So the, law, the Lex Talionis is the principle of reciprocal justice, measure for measure. So literally, if I injured you and your leg had to be amputated, then you have the right to amputate my leg. It was a, a means of reciprocal justice. So there's always this discussion when we hear a story, or there's many stories, where there, there has been this law, this law of retaliation has been enacted, and there was, there was always this conversation about, is it just? Is revenge just? Is an eye for an eye, or a tooth for a tooth, or life for a life? Is that, that, that just? I'd like to give you an, an example of how it was before our Lord came. This is a recent example from the 1980s. There was a lady called Marianne Bachmeiner from the 1980s, and she, she had a troubled youth, and she gave birth to three children to three different men. And the third child she could not bear to give away. She gave the first two to adoption, and she, she kept the third child, her name was Anna. And as a single parent, she struggled to, to raise Anna, and they were in constant conflict. In 1980, when Anna was seven years old, she had an argument with her mother, um, and she skipped school and just ran around the streets for the day. Eventually, she met one of her neighbors by the name of Klaus Grabowski, a 35-year-old butcher. Um, she, she was familiar with him, because she used to go over and visit, visit him and play with his cats. 
Well, this event took a, a bad a turn for the worst. He took in Anna and held her uh, um, hostage for some hours. Eventually, he assaulted her and strangled her to death. According to the prosecutor, he tied her up and packed her into a box and left her on the bank of a canal. And eventually, the fi uh, her, his uh, fiance came home and found, obviously, what he had done and reported him to the police. And he was put into jail. But his court case was only a year after the, the fact. And on the third day of the trial, the mother of Anna, Marianne Buckmeyer, she came into the court, obviously, with a gun, with a pistol, a Beretta 70. She had hidden in her coat, and when the time was right, she, she shot um, Klaus seven times, shot eight times, but seven, he, he was hit seven times, and then she shot him. She said, this is for Anna. This, this, this case and these cases like, like this, they spark conversations about whether is it, is it just a life for a life, and I, I think we go back and forth on this emotional roller coaster because there's something instinctively in us that wants revenge. We want to take exact revenge upon those who, particularly in this case, where she took, where this man took the life of her child, seven year old, and she, she, and according to her own justice, her vigilante justice, she took it back. But we find a solution to the dilemma in, the, in our Lord when he, he, going to chapter. 8 of St. Matthew's, or chapter 5 rather, of St. Matthew's Gospel, when he said these words, mentioning the Lex Talionis, he said, quote, You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But here our Lord changes this law, this Lex Talionis, and flips it on his head. He goes on to say, But I say to you, not to resist evil. But if one strike thee on thy right cheek, turn to him, also the other. The words resist, not to resist evil, is a call to Christian patience, particularly under injuries and affronts, and to be willing to suffer more rather than to indulge in the desire for revenge. In times of persecutions, we are, we are to show Christian patience and not to indulge in this revenge, wanting to exact evil for evil, because revenge and justice belong to God and God alone, which we read further on in today's epistle. And so Paul wrote, quote, Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but give place to the wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Vengeance belongs exclusively to God and not to us. So St. Paul reminds us at the end of the epistle, be not overcome by evil, because that's what happens when we Confronted with this evil, we want to render evil for evil. But he says, he teaches us, and teaches, continues the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, but overcome evil with good. And there are many beautiful examples from the saints where many have been in encountered with evil and returned evil with good. But I'd like to recount one example of a Catholic man in, uh, who, who lost his wife or his wife and daughter were murdered in 2012. And he held a, a, a conference, a press conference after the fact. And it was interesting how he reacted to this horrific event. So his name is Arturo Martinez Sanchez. A young man came into the house and obviously murdered his wife and his daughter uh, with a ha and hammered them to death with a hammer and almost killed Arturo himself. He had, he, he had um, had several severe head injuries. Uh, eventually, this man was caught and, and obviously given over to the authorities. So at this press conference, though, he was asked a question. The question was asked by a reporter, what would you say if you met this man? What would you say to Brian Clay, the man who murdered your wife and your daughter? And these are his words. He, was, he said, I would say, I forgive you. He responded. Uh, if he kissed me on the cheek, I would kiss him back. He said, I forgive because I believe in God. He says, I love my wife, I love my daughter, I love my sons. And we all love Jesus. And through his strength, we will survive. He goes on to say, the reporter said, what, what would happen if 
this man was going to be executed. He said, it's not up to me, it's up to the authorities. But he says, my command, he, he said, is to forgive him. That responsibility was something between me and God and nobody else involved. Obviously, it's a moving, very moving story. Both of them are quite moving, but we see the reality of our Lord's teaching changing this lex talionis to render good with evil. As St. Paul continues the teaching of our Lord, not to be overcome by evil, not to be overcome with the thoughts of revenge, the thoughts to, to, um, to take a life for a life, but, uh, but, but eventually to, as Arturo said, I forgive because I believe. It's because it's faith that you believe. Marianne Bachmeyer, she wasn't a person of faith, but you can, you can, you can um, at least sympathize with her actions. It's not right, but you can sympathize. But this is the way that we should, we should ought to, we ought to be under persecution to overcome evil with good. And when we apply these principles and these stories to our own life, and we look at um, the problems in the church and the problems in society, and we see how the government's out, or whether you believe it or not, they, they're out to, to harm us and rather to do good, our prayers, you know, why do we want to do, eat, to do good to those, who eat, to those who are of the government or goes to the church, to those who are trying to harm us? We pray to our Lord, why do you, why do you, how can we render good to those who are evil? How can we render good to those who are trying to destroy your church? How can we render good to those who are just trying to destroy society when they're trying to destroy God's work for the church and God's, um, those who made humanity? Of through the governments and through what they've done to society. And the Lord answers this question, answers our, our frustrations, if you will, with the words in today's epistle, do not avenge yourselves, dearly beloved, but give place to the wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine and I will, will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And how, you do, how do we do this practically? Well, the Lord teaches us in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 43, he wrote, he said, uh, You have heard that it has been said, Thou should love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to, to them that hate you, pray for them that persecute you and calumniate you, that you may be the children of your Father who is in heaven, who maketh his son to rise upon the good and bad, and reigneth upon the just and the unjust. If we are truly children of a lady, children of God, and not the children of light, not the children of darkness, then we will, as hard as it may seem, follow through and take on the lesson that the Lord is teaching us to not avenge ourselves, but to leave that to the Lord. Finally, we pray to our Mother, Holy Mother, and ask for us to guide us when we are confronted with the evils of the world and the evils that we encounter, unfortunately, in the church. But may she inspire us to overcome evil with good, so that we may be at peace with all men for the sake of our Lord. God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.